Hi everyone, my name is Sean Lynch. I'm the founder and developer of Open Letter Map, and my presentation is about why letter mapping is an important catalyst for not only the citizen science movement, but also for building ground truth capacity to get more value from our observation. So crowd-powered science is an extremely underdeveloped field of geographic information science. Recently, hundreds of millions of people have been equipped with powerful geospatial data collectors, but we're not yet harnessing the potential of involving very large numbers of people in gathering valuable environmental, climate and social data that can help us get better value for services and save time and money. This potential of involving very large numbers of people remains largely unexplored. There is really no good data collection experience that incentivizes and rewards and gathers really valuable data from these large numbers of people. And as we know, Earth observation has many citizen science applications and there are many complementary applications that can bring more people into Earth observation as well. But to increase capacity, to get the ball rolling, um, we need a lower barrier to entry that makes it really accessible for large numbers of people to get involved with data collection for the first time. And I would like to argue that there's no better catalyst for developing the citizen science industry than mapping litter and plastic pollution. Because litter and plastic pollution are not only everywhere, making it very accessible, you only need to walk outside, um, but the objects that we're mapping uh, are easily identifiable. You need a PhD in ecology to be able to identify a bee or an ant, but litter mapping has a very low barrier to entry, making it really accessible for very large numbers of people to get involved in crowdsourcing data for the first time. So I've invented open letter map stemming from the open street map paradigm. Um, I, I took the same principles of crowdsourcing and open data, and that's how open letter map was born. So I started this research back in 2008. It's been informed by more than two masters, which I focused almost exclusively on developing the open letter map methodology. Um, back in 2008, I was introduced to GIS and I was asked to do something with it and write a dissertation in two or three years time. So I started thinking about what could I use GIS for and I wanted to use it to map illegal dumping. And quickly after I started doing that research, I realized that you could use the same technology to map micro litter, which is basically everywhere. So uh, in 2013, I was introduced to OpenStreetMap and later that day, walking home, I had my phone in my hand and I realized that there was no really good way for me to um, map that data uh, and also to make that data accessible um, so it's actually useful. So the, the low barrier to entry is an important catalyst here for the geospatial renaissance because it allows anyone to participate in the production of uh, geographic information for the first time. Um, the low barrier to entry um, allows for not only mass participation, but it also increases uh, people's literacy about geospatial technology and the environment. And litter is changing. Uh, 12 months ago, we didn't have a, a global pandemic. Uh, now we are faced with huge amounts of PPE scattered across the globe. So litter, we don't yet understand how it's moving across space and time. And we don't yet understand the dynamics of its changing characteristics either as consumer preferences um, and needs change. So at Open Letter Map, what we're building is the very first combination of artificial intelligence, which we're building to automatically classify objects with our data. We have tokenization. So we're at, we have Littercoin, which is the first token rewarded for the production of geographic information. And we're combining that with citizen government feedback loops to allow citizens and governments to communicate effectively to solve problems. So we're crowdsourcing actionable data from members of the public, and we're using this data and making it accessible as open data 
which has the potential to change not only human, but also institutional behavior. So the reasons for doing this, I hope by now, are pretty obvious. We're faced with a massive planetary crisis. By 1975, plastic pollution was first recognized to have a global distribution. And now more than 50 years later, we're finally starting to come around to actually do something about it. Millions of taxpayers' money are spent annually by local authorities around the world, but that money is continued to be spent annually and very little changes to actually mitigate the risk involved and proactively mitigate solutions to curb plastic pollution from actually happening in the first place. Plastic pollution is very difficult to detect from space, but there is so much plastic out there that unfortunately it's possible. However, ground truthing is often needed to increase validation at the subpixel level. And this is true for Earth observation in general. And citizen science needs to become more developed to increase subpixel validation. And to do that, citizen science needs a catalyst something that has the potential to involve very large numbers of data collectors for the first time. So this is one of the maps at Open Letter Map and stemming from the open street map paradigm, which are the tiles in the background, we've layered Open Letter Map data on top of that and we've made our data accessible as open data. So anyone can actually download all of the raw data for free and use it for any purpose without restriction. Our data is also mapped and interactive. And these are powerful tools that anyone can use and view and communicate. And it brings the message of ocean plastic into a very local context. And this has the potential to change human behavior at a local scale. Our data is also predefined and quantified rather than in the column getting a string. The, the column row is a type and in the cell, you get a number. And this makes data, pro data processing and science quick and effective. Our data also goes through a verification process to remove as much ambiguity from citizen science data as possible. We have a four or five tier verification process looking at increasing the validity of our data, removing as much ambiguity as possible. Um, and this is used uh, essentially to um, gain high quality data to train our machine learning algorithms, but also to give geospatial analysts um, better confidence uh, in the integrity of, of citizen science data, which is often questionable due to a lack of uh, an appropriate verification process. Our data is also incomplete. So although the app is online and there's about three and a half thousand users, uh, we don't yet have enough data to really train the machine learning algorithms that will drive the accessibility forward in a way that we like. So we hope that more people will take an interest in mapping plastic pollution and get more people involved in doing that too, and also using the data. So I mentioned previously about Littercoin. So Littercoin is the first blockchain token rewarded for the production of geographic information and the production of open data. So two firsts. So stemming from the Bitcoin paradigm, we took the principle of proof of work, of proving that you've done the work, and we applied this to citizen science or the production of GI for the first time. And I want to use Littercoin as a means to incentivize people and reward them and thank them for participating in the scientific process and for generating meaningful data that can help us mitigate huge planetary threats to the environment. Part of the plan with Littercoin is to use it to proactively mitigate waste. So there are many startups um, in the circular economy and the zero waste sectors that are actively looking for new customers. We have potential customers that are interested in the environment and in, pl and in mitigating plastic pollution. And by earning Littercoin, I hope to introduce new customers to new startups to proactively mitigate waste at source from actually occurring in the first place. It's not just the oceans 
and the streets that are littered. I'm sure many people watching this presentation will understand that low earth orbit is also very badly littered uh, and to the extent that if current trends continue, this Kessler syndrome suggests that we may end up in a situation that the planet is so badly littered that we might be locked into this planet forever, ending potential interplanetary species, important satellite missions, trips to Mars, the moon, the search for extra extraterrestrial life, and pushing the boundaries of science far beyond contemporary paradigms, all because of a lot of litter. So I hope that people will take this presentation and uh, the potential of litter mapping and empowering people to mitigate these threats very seriously. So to close, Open Litter Map is in development. I also run another project called drugletter.info where we apply the same principles to crowdsourcing drug-related paraphernalia to proactively protect public health. Uh, and I'm working with a, an institutional client on that. We have data collection going on continuously for over five years, one of the most comprehensive data sets in the world. As well as that, um, I'm a diver and uh, I, my next plan after Open Letter Map is to launch Open Coral Map, which has a very a, a, probably a stronger Earth observation component directly, um, and also another important catalyst for citizen science. As well as that, uh, more locally here in my native Ireland, I'm also planning to launch Open Kelp Map, which is not unlike Open Coral Map, where we will get hyper spatial resolution on the ecosyst ecosystem health of um, marine biodiversity. So my startup company, Geotech Innovations, is based here in Ireland, and we're pioneering essential citizen science products and services to help solve some of our most global urgent challenges. We're currently pre-seed, pre-revenue, and pre-grant, uh, but we're looking for partners to help us expand uh, and to build these essential services with more than a, a decade of research and uh, behind them. So thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, I'd absolutely love to hear from you.